my internet decided to stop working. Um, anyways, what were you saying? I don't think they, um, you can hear me, right, Bruin? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Um, everybody in the chat, are you able to hear us? I think my connection went down. Uh, yes. The video got cut off. Okay. Reload the page and see if we're back up. I mean, we are back, but, uh, I think the video, I, at least on the YouTube side, the video got chopped up. Yeah, which sucks. Uh, I hate I know. when that happens. But for some reason, my stupid internet has been going off and on today. But anyways, so yeah, um, w what you were saying, Burin, in the last, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds, it got cut off. Oh, yeah. Okay. So what I was saying was that uh, add some interest points. It can be a tattoo, scar, tumor, uh, maybe something electronically installed in them or... You know, and also the color cues, like if it's red, he's angry. If it's like uh, green, he's happy or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely think about something that can uh, help help the art director or maybe a player or any audience member can recognize and understand. And uh, yeah, you can just, yeah, definitely study dancers, animal body poses, body language, uh, and then combine your own ideas on it that's what i would say on this one along with what colton just said in the previous part of the video so yeah yeah definitely so mm -hmm. um thank you for submitting your work and uh, as far as as far as you know like the technical aspect it's, it's really not that bad the values aren't too bad you know the the lighting's not too bad the uh it's it's fine you know I, I also saying, like the setting where he yeah. put it in the apartment. So I guess it's like post-apocalyptic, like yeah. Metro uh, Metro 2033, I think, right? Yeah. Kind of approach I see here. But yeah, you can definitely at least uh, focus on the character design first, and then you can build the world around it. That mm -hmm. can work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would just say in this day and age, like the the design industry like concept industry is so difficult to get into that you have to be just you have to be really good to break into it like because this feels um if it's not like super super high quality then it's like not good enough almost which stinks but um one more thing i want to add is that if you're doing such character or whatever designs you have to look into every other popular version that is out there. Like if I was going to do that kind of monster design, I would definitely look up that space. That's number one. That's the most famous among gamers. And then you need yeah. to watch uh, all types of horror movies. The thing from the 1980s, I think uh, John mm -hmm. Carp Carpenter made it. That movie is exactly what inspired dead space. Mm -hmm. And uh, on top of that, if you want to go really crazy, you can go into some horrible medical books. Uh, and uh, yeah, disease, everything that is grotesque, uh, some horror movies. I'm not talking about necessarily um, uh, body horror movies. I'm talking more about like uh, ghostly type with strange creature type movies, Stranger Things, right? Yeah. So chances are, not in this day and age, everything is so accessible. Whatever you're going to draw, the chances are somebody already did it in one form. And you need to kind of figure out a way to put it in a different context, or you need to completely go the other other way than those guys went. So yeah, it, it's becoming ever more difficult in this day and age, especially if you're going to do concept art. Yeah, um, I, I definitely agree. You know, it's like you got to do your due diligence with researching the researching the subject matter you know it, it used to be as a concept artist if you just drew cool things you get hired but now it's like you have to research the industry and be like you know like what has come before what did they do how can i make mine different and you know, there's so much, there's so many designs being produced. There's so much artwork and it's your job 
to come up with new content, which means you have to know what has already been done. Like it used to be that a lot of things hadn't been done. So you could, you're pretty safe to say that, you know, you can do whatever. So yeah, that's, that's kind of just what I wanted to say about this. It's like, you know, it's like everything except the fact that it's been done already, I would say is, is okay with this like except um i mean obviously like some painting and you know like your focal point and the lighting and stuff like that it can be it can be pushed but but more so than that like we need something you know worth pushing forward i would change the design before i would go any more detailed with this i mean this is kind of an interesting design right here i would definitely play on yeah, that yeah I, I i definitely like that shimmering light going on i wonder what that's about yeah you know, it can be some really cool plot point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, you could you could definitely push this. So yeah, just keep researching and definitely watch all the things we mentioned, and it will definitely give you more ideas. Yeah, and don't forget to make take notes. People always ignore notes. They you whatever you're watching, doing, always either you type it on your phone or a little sketchbook. I know it's a hassle, but the look, man. Uh, one of the thing. Uh, most people need to understand, especially doing concept art, is that the reason why they put down all these writings and words down on paper is because you're taking it out of your mind mm -hmm. and you're opening more space to think more things. That's why those people do mind maps. So you can definitely look into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about it for this, I think. You want to mm -hmm. go to uh, one of yours? Yeah, sure. Uh, all right. Yeah. Let me uh, quickly switch to my... Photoshop. Okay, uh, this is he's uh, Austin Hall. His entry this week, and he made this awesome demonic, horned, satyr type uh, character with crazy powerful arms and tiny little hoofs, and he had <laughs> all this golden. See, the horn is golden, and uh, all the what do you call these uh, rocks or? Are they bones? I'm not sure, but I think they're rocks. Yeah, and then and he got these cool golden strips on them, and he got these leather armbands and stuff. And last time we told Aston Hall to definitely push for his uh, materials. Yeah. So, and and we're kind of happy that uh, he's definitely trying, but um, that there's still more to go. Uh, so sorry to say that, but we really appreciate the effort. Uh, keep doing that. Uh, It'll definitely bring more results. Yeah, it'll so, get more um, natural over time. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, a couple of things I want to say here is that your hair, like things still look pretty plasticky like last time, but at least you're trying more variety with the noise here. But my advice would be like, before you go start with your uh, texture brush here, um, just because like you throw in texture brush doesn't necessarily make it uh, a material, you know? Because especially if you use the same texture brush almost everywhere, like if you if you kind of look at the hair, it looks like uh, plastic uh, anime models where you buy online kind of, mm -hmm. you know? It, it doesn't look there is like hair. It, it looks more like it's kind of like carved in, you know? doesn't feel that way. And also, mm -hmm. uh, choosing exactly same color with the armband and the fur is really hard to disassociate with what we're looking at. Yeah, You need to at least make the leather armband maybe more grayish or some other color, right? Um, so, again, once we do that, we go to study. So, so this time, I only focused on fur. So if you look at fur... There's so many different types of fur you can see, right? Like, you, but you can see, uh, I can see that you're trying to do more clumped type fur style. So that's why I chose these ones. I don't know what animal it's from, but it definitely shows what's going on where, right? So um, if I make a quick marking on this, like it gets more, the color gets more saturated or more lighter, I guess, more concentrated when the hair gets brought down together like this, right? 
on the edges. But when it gets spread apart, you can see that it gets more darker, 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 right? Same thing here. The more clumped it gets, it, it, it gets to have, what do you call this, Colton? Like the like the contrast gets higher, right? That's, that's the correct word I should use, right? I mean, there's definitely shadows underneath of it too. Like yeah. an ambient occlusion under it. Mm. So, um, yeah. And also, each of the clump fibers are like, like this, let's say, and the, and and the surface would be this. And if you if the light hits, uh, you know all the sphere, and there's the highlight, and there's the ambient occlusion, and there's the true shadow, and there's the bounce light. It's it's the same thing, but it's more like in a a bent bent surfaces, right? That's the right word, I think. So what I mean is, uh, Colton, check this out, like. This one was another example. You can, you can definitely look at the highlights here. You see, mm. highlights, highlights. It's like it's like sphere and cone, and torus, right? It's it's the same idea, right? Whenever there's like a bump, whenever there's a bump like this, mm -hmm. in the surface, then there will be more highlight because the, you know, bounces and stuff. You need to definitely look into that and. Here, right? Look at the bear. This is this is even more crazy. This is a wet fur, but this is the idea I'm going with here, right? Like bear is just one uh, cylinder, right? So up here, you will, the sun is hitting here, and even though each piece is like its own piece, it's not going to be uniformly white, right? Because this this part is under this zone. This part is under this zone. This part is under that zone. So what I like what you did here is that you kind of try to do that on your leg here and also on your beard. You, you're definitely getting it right on certain levels. So, uh, okay, next one. So you might ask why I made these green markings. Is because you, to me, it looks like you lost some proportions with your anatomy. Because um, if you look at, if you look at, this armband, this one looks more smaller than this one here to me. And also the length of the entire arm seems, um, this, this arm definitely should be slightly smaller in general proportion because um, it's further away from us, right? So yeah, but it's, it's not that, of a big deal what i did is i did a little overpaint here and now you need to start using smudge brush and blur brush on top of hard round soft round and finally your texture brush because if you keep using texture all this noise gets a lot of attention from what you need to see right so my advice would be apply the texture brush last right so if you look at all the fur, I, I try to emulate what we see here, right? Also, I try to fix the, uh, uh, what do you call it? the surface of these uh, ribbons? Because up here, if you look at here, there's like a really sudden shift and a weird lump here. Like it's, it doesn't tell us that there is actually a soft transition of uh, curved faces. That's how I see it. And also with the fur here, um, there's like a re like he to me he looks like he's wearing a pants at this point right because the fur is not making right transitions mm -hmm. right if you look at any animal that has skin and fur together in one area even if you look at your own forehead if you have body hair you can just study from yourself or of course definitely you can google up some images so you need to understand about transition. If you look at this top image, the, 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 the further it goes, there'll be like a soft transition of hair, uh, fur, uh, even rocks on the shoulders that you're doing here, right? So if you look here, this is what I try to do just a little bit. So, if, okay, you, 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 if you want a really quick transition, you can do it, but you can still, you still need to apply this on a certain level. 
And with the uh, skin texture, it's, it's definitely going to be different on the elbow or if he uses his wrists to punch people, like, I mean, the knuckles to punch people, like the roughness of the skin will definitely change depending on what kind of a job he does. And usually the hair on the, uh, the skin under the armpit is really soft because that's where most people, like animals, uh, sweat. And also... Uh, this part of skin doesn't really touch on to other different surfaces, like, like for example, palm skin, right? It's, it's really different. You see, yeah, there's you no calluses on it. What? Callus. Mm hmm? You know callus, right? There's no calluses uh, in the armpit. Okay, my, my English is not good enough, so okay. sorry. Again, <laughs> seventh time. <laughs> it's so yeah, it's, it's rough skin that builds up, you know, like when you play the guitar, there's calluses oh, on right, your fingers. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, okay, that one. So if if you look at the gorilla hair, right? If if you look around the belly part, like this area is skin, but this area is like fur, right? So this is skin and this is fur. So you in this area you definitely have transitions, right? Light transition to bigger transition. Same thing on this monkey's face, right? This area has very little trim hair. Very little. And then you get your crazy hair right there. I know the transition is sudden, but you definitely have some transition here. So definitely remember this. And I'm sorry if some of you don't like my choice of reference images, but this is what I could find closest to the... I'm sure you can switch languages and go to different uh, source image websites. You can find tons more. But yeah, uh, keep on setting more materials and definitely i highly recommend uh testing with uh, blur brushes smudge tools and yeah and use sharpen and soft round hard round finally texture brush okay try that finally touch texture brush on the last thing you will ever do try to uh practice with that and maybe it'll definitely bring bring you a different result. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, Colton, do you have anything to add? Um, no, not for the most part. <clears throat> um, I think you pretty much covered everything. Yeah, just um, maybe maybe introduce an extra material too. Hmm. Uh, maybe something I don't know because right now I think there's one two three materials in the entire image besides the rock on the ground i think maybe introducing some more some more variety maybe more color because right now it's it's three colors three materials maybe you know one or two more just even in little areas or just here or there um i think that would i think that could help a lot too you know again kind of it kind of feels like a like a figurine maybe like a an anime figurine or something Uh, that's pretty much it, though. I would. All say. right. Hmm. So, uh, Colton, do you want me to continue, or do you want to take over? Oh, I got another one for you. Okay. See. See what I'm I gonna... got. This is gonna be a pretty short one. Hmm. Um, maybe I can do two. Let's see what the. One yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah, I can. Okay. So I will. Okay. So this one, um, it's, I actually quite like this image. This is by, um, Ev Evan, I don't know. It's, it's in the discord name. It's, uh, E V A N Y L A. But anyways, so with this image, I just have a couple of comments. Um, technically I think it's working. It's, it's not working too bad. But they they put this up without any comments, so I really don't know what the intention is of this image. So I would say that um, I'm I'm really not sure what you're trying to say with this piece. If it's an illustration or if it's a concept piece, um, it's it's really it's not bad. It's a little unclear. Like, so you have this lightning that's coming out of the cloud and hitting this maybe castle or something in the background it's not super well defined it's kind of more like a uh, st uh you know a rectangle with a point on it 
Um, just not sure exactly um, what it is. I, th I think it looks pretty overall. I'm not sure about the clouds. I mean, if this is like a photo texture, for example, just it, it kind of looks like a, a photo of like a cumulonimbus cloud from like Google. So I don't know if um, like you took this photo or not. I would just I would just be a bit pretty careful with with taking photos of from online. Um, if if not, if you took your own photo, then that's that's awesome. Uh, same with the lightning. I can tell that, you know, there's like, so it comes out of the cloud right here. I think this transition is a little bit weird. Maybe find some, some reference of lightning coming out of the clouds. And as it goes down, you can tell that like right here, it starts, the, the photo actually starts to get stretched a bit. And that becomes pretty obvious. You know, as you zoom in on this image, you can tell that there's a lot of really stretched photo textures. And I think you want to, um, and also the noise is different between these two. You can tell by the, from the oops from the photos. So focus on like that angle. There's a lot of photo textures in here that are that are applied without any correction. They're kind of just skewed into place, and I think those become very obvious when you look at it more, especially to a to like a professional. And then I the for the most part, the last thing I would say is. Um, these kind of motion blurred things in the foreground. Um, I don't think there's any like big trees around. I can't see any, so I don't know if they're leaves or if it, like, I'm just not sure what they are. Um, just, ha I would, I would say at the end of the day, just have a clear idea of what you want your image to be of what you want to communicate, what story you want to tell. And that's about, that's about it. You know, like if you're trying to become a concept artist, which is what, you know, which is what I do and what Burin does, like, and that's our area of expertise. I would say focus on either telling more of a story, showing more of a mood, if you're going for a mood piece or actually really digging in and designing something out, you know, like how is the, how does the land in this area connect to each other? Cause right now this kind of feels like a, like a school assignment of being taught Photoshop. So that's, that's about it for what I have on this piece. I can go over the next one too, which is this one which is, is, is not completely finished, they've said, but I think that there's a few things that should already be resolved at this point because it's one of the first things you should resolve in an image, which is the lighting, the light direction. That's one of the first things you should just, should decide on, depending on your process exactly, um, especially at this point. And I, I think also the, um, the values distance wise there's certain colors that would would fade as you get further the sky value is blending in like right here the the sky is is completely blending in with the mountains so the mountains are are vanishing a, a lot of the a lot of the way they don't read super well same with the tree right here and the ground right here it, it just doesn't this is a huge landscape that spans for miles and miles i would say definitely <clears throat> focus on your your value change as the distance gets further so i did a bit of a paint over um a, a really quick one to to go over that which is this so all i really did was just kind of push it into the background as things get further away the details get more implied like a, a group of trees or a, i guess i should say like a forest will turn into just one shade of color and with like a very soft transition depending on like the slope of the hill so a lot of the stuff i i pushed into the background i didn't think the tree was reading all that well um i think that you're you you should figure out your big forms of the trees and then go from there um i think that you should figure out the the color temperature of the light and the dark areas like this is a very stylized piece so you're the temperature change is going to be a lot like the the lit side of these trees are very 
are, are much warmer than like the the shadows inside like the ambient occlusion and all that and just make sure that's consistent overall um i, I added a little bit of a light direction and indication and then that's for the most part, that's it. I tilted the guy a little bit. I, I just really felt like this guy right here was almost like a composition stopper. It's just very stiff. And I just feel like it could be integrated better into the image. Like maybe like more negative space. It kind of just feels like a, like a rectangle at this point. Like, you know, a rectangle on a rectangle. Like perfectly. I feel like more just break up. Like even the map that he has that you said you wanted to put in there follows this rectangle almost perfectly like everything and i think just breaking it up a little bit more and showing that he's like walking leaning forward giving him some negative space in between can help this a lot focus on your big medium and small shapes you know his negative space shapes could should have like little areas you know bigger bigger areas you know odd angles that are not so rectangular um and yeah like you know he's like walking towards her she's pointing at the landscape like i really get that i like the story going on in this it's it makes a lot of sense and i i really like it i really like the idea behind this i also put a little bit more water in there this isn't something you have to do you can do it another way but basically like in yours, I think a lot of this perspective and things getting further away are you have a couple things kind of working against you. Like sometimes as things are getting further away, you're actually scaling up the objects. So, you know, like as, as something gets further away, I can draw just a really quick illustration of what I mean. You know, like so so in, in perspective, as, as something it, uh, gets further away, you know, it's like this rectangle getting further away like maybe that's the same size and then that like if if you're right here and you're looking at this like this maybe they're like boxes and they're getting further away but i think a lot of the time what you're doing in your pieces and and not just this one is actually as this is getting further away this one is now far away but it's very scaled up and they actually look the same size and that can really work against you in in your um just in your images like say for example you know like maybe um maybe this one is you got this one back here maybe there's like another one like like right there like really far back there and then there's like a one like even further back there and I kind of did this right here to show to show that. Let me go to this new layer right here. So I kind of did like here's this and then this one's further away, you know, and this one's a little bit further than this one. So it's kind of, you know, and you could even put like another one back here that's like like that, so it, it looks like there's just a whole vast like valley of these like sticky uppy thingies, these big rocks or something. And then your detail, and then I I didn't go into it, but you know you can make you need your detail level to read with the uh, because this is huge, you know this is like the size of a bigger than a skyscraper. So the details have to read as if it were bigger than a skyscraper, you know, like maybe you have like little rocks like coming out of it or. And these rocks themselves are the size of like giant buildings or even larger. Like this is the scale that we're working at. So we have to, you know, what did Bur Burin, what did Zue always say? You don't scale up a car, you make it a van. No, it's um, like if you, if you want to scale up a car, it becomes a bus. Yeah, it becomes a van and then it becomes, you know, like a bus and it becomes – this giant vehicle you know you don't just scale up something small in order to make it giant you need to also accommodate there will be for... a paradigm shift yeah exactly so just make sure that 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 is going on so that's about it for this piece um overall i mean i like i like the image i think there's just a couple things on it to to focus on and that's about it for this. Hmm.
you know, and then I, I did not have a lot planned today. I have a couple, I just have Brad's piece to go over and a number of the weekly assignments to make a quick, some quick notes on. And yeah, so I can switch to you, Burin, and we will, mm. there you go. You're on. So uh, this is from uh, Matt Walker, and uh, all right. so he did this in 3D, and he actually posted it two weeks ago, uh, but he this time posted it again. Sorry we couldn't do it last week because when you up submitted it, it was so close to the video, so we apologize for that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I like this uh, anglerfish. It's, it's really uh, scary. Look at all the sharp teeth. And I like that uh, dramatic lighting in the back that really shows us how big it is. It reads nicely. A um, couple of things. Well, my take would be, again, as always, if, if you especially want to be a 3D concept artist, what do concept artists need to do? Research, right? So I checked out all the deep sea anglerfish and a couple of things I definitely noticed was that um, they have this teeth that's almost like transparent, like glass. Dang, that's cool. And then their fins are also fin a swimmer. What do you call them, uh, Colton? Paddle? These... Paddlers? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, they're fins, dude. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, these, <laughs> these fins are also transparent because they never see sunlight. So that's why half of their body doesn't need to develop any... Uh, what do you call pig pigments, right? Skin pigments. Yeah. But since they still need to be dark to blend in the sea, they still have that dark pigment on their certain part of their areas. But you can totally see that light goes through it like really crazy. So you need to do a lot of uh, subsurface scattering if you need to render this. And uh, so, yeah, it's crazy. Like, it's just a one big mouth. It's just a head with fins, right? It's kind of comedic design if you look at it. So, yeah, um, okay. Look at that one down there, dude. It looks like Frankenstein, the tiny bumps one. Yeah. <laughs> there are lots of screws, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, definitely a couple of things I marked was that it's a see-through, right? Uh, see-through fins, see-through teeth, in general. Like, the skin is almost like a glass that has, like, a second layer on top. That's kind of crazy. And then you can see that uh, high-density bones, is, that's not the correct word. Like, fins have lots of segments, right? Uh, I guess these are not the correct words. Forgive my English. No mas. Huh? What? So, uh, my, my, my English is terrible. What did so, you say? I said uh, high density bones, which is not correct. It's more oh. like more segmented fin. And also, uh, there's like a texture opacity transition. If you look at the fins and the teeth, right? And then you have these tiny bumps. Because if you look at the first image up here, you will not really know that these little things are bumps. You would probably look at it like, no, it's probably these little white dots in their skin. It's not. Because if you look at the similar species from another angle, they're actually little bumps. So that's why you need to, when you collect reference images, don't stick to just one image you found. Try to find the full blueprint, up, down, top. Go to YouTube, find a video, watch. There's plenty of Animal Planet clips there. You know, if you really want to go deep into it, you have to look into those things because if you don't know, then yeah, it, it might cause a problem to, if you show it to someone, some people who actually really know their stuff. These things are unforgivable. Uh, to the uh, professionals, I guess. But since I don't know any anglerfish, I wouldn't know, you know, but now I know since I did the research for both of us. And you can definitely, if, since you're doing concept design, you can definitely go for a different type of fish. Uh, there was so many kinds. Uh, I couldn't put all of them here, but check this out. Like this fish, to me, it looks like it has very tough skin with scales because they need to withstand like a lot of pressure. So that's why they have this scaly fish. And also these kind of scaly fish kind of reminds me of those really deep ancient 
uh, prehistoric. What do you call Colton? Uh, pre. Uh, pre what? Prehistoric. Thank you for the uh, follow, Max. By the way. These era. A uh, Jurassic, Triassic. What do you call them? There is like a hundred different names for the different eras throughout history. Okay. okay. So but, I use the popular. It's you know prehistoric. The popular, a really popular one is the Jurassic era, but. Mm. I don't know them all by heart, you know, but there's there's a bunch of different, bunch of different ones. Um, prehistoric is what you're looking for, though. Mm. So I think you can definitely mix them if you're gonna go for cool concept art things. Um, so I did a little overpaint, but what I did was I did not break your design as much as I would. So I simply added those elements I saw on our reference images like those fins and paddlers and definitely those glass-like teeth. And I wanted to give it an interest point, so I painted the eye orange, right? Because orange is the opposite color of blue. So now when you look at this image, you immediately look at the eye and then the teeth, right? That's the, it, it creates this uh, triangular interest point like this, right? And, uh, I thought the, the uh, glowy part was too big for this image, so I scaled it down a little bit and I added those little bumps here, and then I definitely made those fins transparent. You can definitely try that. And I also added, uh, you know, predators, the first thing that comes into my head is tiger or all those uh, striped dangerous creatures. So I added uh, this... Um... What? Oh, uh, what's going on here? Okay, so I added this uh, stripy red, uh, not red, like warm orange colors to make it look more scary and more eye-catching. But yeah, I know it's concept design, so uh, if, if we put it side by side, uh, you can look here. Just, just adding it just a little bit research, just a little bit play with texture and pushing it to more real stuff we have. Right, you don't need to design anything new. You just only need to mix what's out there, right? So that's what I did. And um, for three D, I have a couple of things I need to mention. You definitely need to add volumetric fog because if you look at your tail, it's like it's floating in the air. It doesn't look like it's in the water. But when we look at underwater photos. The more distant the thing goes, it, there's more uh, dirt, water, everything that's going to be between us and that thing, that object. So it will definitely have more volumetric fogs. Uh, you need to add post-process volume. And you also need to add material ID and separation plus opacity mask. We were talking about this glass-like transition between teeth and the fins. And you also need to add like third light source to create more rim light, which I did over here. Uh, you can probably notice that uh, I just tried to increase the edge on this side with blue light. So you can definitely put invisible light and make the rim light pop out just a little bit more. So it, it will create that uh, kind of almost like a sticker effect but not necessarily but but you get what i mean it just helps the other side pop up more and then finally uh more intense normal map on your model so you can definitely once you design all the once you sculpt it in zbrush you can definitely bake it later so you can have all these uh crazy little bumps pop out more when you render it without increasing the poly count so yeah, that's my take on it then. Uh, if you look at these uh, white dirt thingies here, like they're usually planktons and all these micro creatures that does not get caught in the camera due to, uh, f what do you call, uh, focus points, uh, where the focus is at. But if you look at these uh, deep underwater videos, you will definitely find them like here, here, here. The closer to the camera, the blurry it will get. So. Yeah, but yeah, I like it a lot. It's you, you, you definitely have this very uh, interesting piranha. Like I don't know, it's it's just scary to me. So yeah, just if you have time, 
it's always safe to invest more into your research. I, you, you, I don't think you have any problem modeling this stuff. You definitely have the skill level. But yeah, you can definitely look up the things I listed on the internet to add more, uh, what do you call, value to your work, I guess. So uh, yeah, that's what I have for Matt Walker. Do you have anything to say, Colton? Uh, yeah, I got, I got something to say. <clears throat> um, I'll share my screen really quick. So Boren pointed something out that I was quite fascinated with which was this. Right here. Oh my God, it's confirmed. <laughs> yes. No. Look at this. Everybody in <laughs> chat will be able to hear this. Illuminati. Yep. Yep. So I always I always like Burin's critiques though they're very in depth. So I don't really have any I don't really have any um anything to say about um I'm actually not gonna uh there. So you know it definitely needed a splash of color. I think I think this person drew over a ZBrush model, which is the. I remember a lot of people always did this in FZD and it's, you have to really understand your, your fundamentals of, of materials and everything. Actually, can you bring it back to your, um, oh, over? sorry. Um, it's very important to, to understand your, your fundamentals, like with, of materials and, you know, transparency and subsurface scattering and texture of, of the fish's skin and all that kind of stuff. Because if you're going to take a, if you're going to take a model and, you know, take a picture of it and then like from like the ZBrush render or whatever, which is like a really, really bad render, you you, you probably want something like Keyshot or something. But uh, in, in fact, Blender, you know, just throw it in Blender cycles. Like if you don't have, if you can't afford Keyshot or anything, like just download Blender for free and throw it in cycles. And Blender and EV. Stuff. Yeah, EV. You can combine both. You can take both screenshots with both render engines and then mask out what you want to keep, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So just mm. just be careful that your final image doesn't look like a screenshot from ZBrush because that can really kind of shoot yourself in the foot. Um, and then, of course, all the, all the design stuff that Burin talked about, your first, second, third level details, your textures, looking at reference, making, you know, Franken-angler fish. So I think that's an angler fish. Yeah, it's an anglerfish, yeah. So, um, yeah, but, I mean, just look at the reference. If this is the thing that Fang would always say, if you can Google something and find a cooler design, you need to do your job better. Like, if you can just hop on Google real quick, and especially when you're doing real-world stuff. Like, if you're just doing a straight-up anglerfish, like, why do they need you to draw this when they can just Google one that's better is what i'm saying you know you, you heard him say that right bird yeah yeah definitely so so yeah i mean i mean yours isn't exactly the same as like a real one you know you have more of like a round shape language it looks like yeah it's you know? more uh cartoony he definitely tried yeah. to change the it's it's more like uh animation type yeah. design you know it's it's cool I, I i like it too but adding focal point with the eye and this and that balance out the white and because if I look at your first picture, the only thing I notice is this white circle. That's it. Yeah. But uh, when you push it down and make the other parts pop out, now my eye go immediately to the eye and the teeth and then the circle finally, even though it's the brightest point. So, yeah. Yep. Um, one last thing that I'll do. I can totally, um, oops, I can totally see this. You know, you just have your little. And you can put like a tiny scuba diver and make it even scary, you know? Like that big. <laughs> no, not the Nemo. <laughs> 
What does she have on her? Yellow, I think. Yellow stripe in the satin. That it's like straight cut. I have like, no idea. I don't know. I yeah, don't something at like all. that. Yeah, it's it's almost like NFL team, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, there. Um. But don't forget, guys. Don't forget. This is how you make successful images. So, anyways, I can go on to my next one, or yeah. we can have delete, delete, delete. So, uh, my last one is Brad's. The last kind of paint over that I have is by Brad, and he did a he did a really good job, actually, really, really good job. Orion had some had some great. Um, I'll hide this. Orion had some really great feedback for him in the chat, a lot better than my feedback was, um, with the colors and the exposure and everything. And I think that it helped a lot, you know, especially with like the flame, um, with what he said about it. So all I did in this one was, um, adjust some of the values a bit and lower the guy in this image. This guy is probably like 10 feet tall. Yeah. Because he's so far up on the ground. If this guy is supposed to be a giant who's 10, 20 feet tall, then great. But if this guy is not supposed to be, definitely move him down so he's closer to the camera. Like, this guy's halfway, like, this guy's... Yeah. All I'm saying is this guy's slightly, huge. Uh, more so sensible. Lower him a little bit down to here. You know, like... Uh, you know, you can see him in the background. I lowered him a bit, and then I just made the um, uh, separated out the the building a little bit, but uh, like like that. That's really all I think it needs. I did a pretty sloppy job, but it gets the idea across. I think this building needs to read against the background, so just fog it out a bit, and that's it. It's working really well. Like what this image used to look like versus what it looks like now it's so it's so much better like i can't even explain how much better it is now um you, you like yeah so when when you when you started on this image and built it in 3d and everything like it's come a long way dude like this piece is is pretty good uh what did i write down here yeah that's it those two things So that's uh, that's Brad's, I guess, critique. Yeah, good job, dude. Uh, you've been working on this for a couple weeks now, and it is looking great. So now all I have is a number of studies. Is that it for you, Burn? I have two more. You have two more. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want me to do one of my studies? I guess I can do one of mine. Cause that was pretty short. Yeah. Go ahead, man. <clears throat> okay. Um. This is Austin's. Uh, studies and first I want to say really really nice everything that you've been putting up has been at a really high quality and I can tell that you put a lot of effort into your art and you're gonna get really really good in the future so with this one I would say number one your colors are a little bit off like all of them are consistently off to a certain part of the spectrum which makes me wonder if you are not um, your monitor colors aren't actually off a bit. I would say that's probably it. Um, like if like this one for example, this is a lot more green than this one. See, like it jumps to blue, and then this one jumps to green, like a lot more green. It's it's not really quite green. Yet. It's more cyan, but your your colors are all off just it's it's like you took your image and color balanced it a certain way like you could probably fix all of these just by con hitting control b and maybe just going like like that see just cool them down a little bit now all of them are are i would say are a lot closer maybe maybe a little bit a little bit more than that but it's just this ever so slightly so that's not a big issue. I, I think it's probably your monitor. So you, you are either looking at your image on one screen and drawing it on another 
and then they end up being different because the monitor color calibration is different or something's going on. I don't know exactly. I'm not worried about it though. Uh, really high quality. I would say though, uh, other than that, um, maybe the next step for you, since you have a really high quality to your work is to focus more on your brush strokes rather than, cause I've noticed that you use hard round basically. Well, you, I guess you use some textures on some stuff, but I would focus more on using your brush strokes in a more, maybe interpret some things in these pieces in a more kind of, what would be the word? Not, not really gestural, more of a implied way instead of rendering everything out 100%. And I think that would actually help the look of your work a bit. Uh, unless you want your work to be like, you know, super, super, unless you don't want to focus on brush strokes as much and more just render everything out super tight, 100%, like photorealistic, even when you zoom in super tight. Uh, maybe experiment with like, you can only paint with a brush of like this certain size or you can't zoom in. Maybe you, you, you don't let yourself zoom in the entire painting or, or something like that. Cause that might help a lot, you know, maybe do some studies of some traditional painters works. I think I might've written that up here. Um, it, lo it looks like, like everything you're doing, even when you're not using just a round brush, a lot of it looks like that kind of hard round look. So I would say study, do some studies of like brush stroke studies maybe. I, I think that'll help you a lot. Uh, and material studies. In fact, I was gonna say this area, this earlier. Do material spheres. Like, you know, do 10, do 20, do 30, do 40, do 50. Material spheres. Um, I, I, I'm gonna look up some references really quick of some material spheres. Cause I totally forgot about this earlier. Um, let's see. A bunch of these are really badly done on Google. Um, I guess I can just take, let's see, uh, something like this, maybe. Ew. It's not very well done though. Okay. It's just for the example, a uh, copy image. Okay. This one's actually a bit better. Okay. I found a better one. Like this. Honestly, do these. These will help you so much. Like, I'm not even kidding. Do spheres of all different kinds of materials, you know. I, we did a bunch of these in FZD, you know, Burin? Yeah, plenty. Um, two, for did, two weeks straight. I did so many funny ones. I did, like, a, there was one. It was a bald eagle with, a, like, an American flag behind it. And it was, like, crying. And it said, like, I think it said, like, God bless America or something. And then there was, I did one of Kingston, one of our, our teachers. I made a material sphere out of him, like his head. And, oh, it was so, it was so, it, you can make it, you can make it really fun. But do material spheres. Um, like I did one of a, a bowl of, a bowl of rice or like a ball of rice. And you'll actually notice that rice has a really interesting way of subsurf doing subsurface scattering. Like it's not just white. It has like this warmth to it when the light pierces through it. So material spheres, I would say definitely do these. This this person actually did a pretty good job on these. You can tell what they yeah, like to draw uh, based on these. They like to draw this. They really for your material this one. studies. Uh, don't just use one type of brush. Try to get the right ones. Again, smudge and blur brushes are really important. I mean, not everywhere, but when it's necessary. Yeah, uh, they do things that simple brush and eraser just can't do. So. Also, do not neglect layer, layers sometimes. Just if, if, if certain uh, texture requires uh, layer settings to opacity or, you know, masking and all that, then do that too. You know, just, just try to get uh, good at also using and mixing your tools while you're learning those brush elements as well. Yeah, look at this. That's cool. They added a little light here. That's nice. They should have done a that little light. That is so cool. They should have done like a little thing right there or something. Just um, make it uh, to the other side. Yeah, 
Good. These are really well done, actually. This person did a really good job, especially on, like, this one. Is this, this is, like, tea or something? I like that. Like, you see, if you look at these, you know, like, you get, like, this is the material studies. You know, you have this, um, this uh, specular highlights. You have the subsurface scattering through here. You got your dark, your darkest shadows, like, in there. You have these ice cubes, you know, scratches on the metal, different textures, rust. You have these you know, specular highlights on here and this. These, this person did a good job. You can tell what they enjoyed doing most. They they definitely enjoyed this wing a lot. They definitely enjoyed this wood one a lot. I don't think they um, enjoyed this wood one as much. This one they had a lot of trouble with because the perspective's off on it in places and it doesn't really, it's not really acting like a light that much, but uh, these are really nice, so. Just find some material spheres, find some ones that are done really well, and just find some materials online, like a picture of, I don't know, a, a, I don't know, a tractor, and then do a study of the materials that are in that tractor or, you know, on the grass, and you'll notice, because material spheres will teach you, it'll give you everything to have, like, subsurface scattering, you know, core shadows bounce light like like that light bounce light from the ground it'll you'll have your you know your your terminator shadow which is like your core shadow i think you know your bounce light um your specular highlights and then anything else and just have fun with them you'll get a lot better like a lot better this one's kind of cool too so yeah uh, good work with these studies and even just doing these studies will help you a lot like you're starting to get your highlights and stuff so yeah anyways nice work with these uh Boren, do you want to do before? oh yeah uh i have one from a weinberg platypus so this person did this uh underwater aquatic guardian <clears throat> I like the uh, general uh, mood of it all. Like he made, uh, I don't know if it's a he or she. This person made a really nice choice of colors. I would say it's it's only like two uh, val uh, hues, kind of like uh, green and orange, right? And I like the idea of this uh, swimming warrior with this lantern and probably. And I like the design of the lantern. He can actually use it as a weapon. And it's so spiky, like other enemy cannot grab it and run away with it. So, um, yeah. A uh, couple of things I want to say is that definitely, again, uh, if you want to be a concept artist or if you want to draw a drawing that is slightly more true to the real world, you definitely have to take pictures showing similar situations. So this is what I found. Like, if you look at these two images, it's definitely similar to what you're trying to do. And um, yeah, uh, especially the top green one is really close to what you're trying to do. You could definitely see that uh, volumetric fog going on in the water. It really works in the water. Um, if you look at it down here, I found this amazing photo shoot session with this underwater farmer, which is cool. There's actually a YouTube video you can find that they actually set up this guy underwater with this whole thing and even this glowing lantern. So I think this kind of fits your situation here, especially with the lantern and how the light can shine um, on on your uh, person, if how uh, regardless of how far and close they are. So yeah. These are my references for the for your image, and uh, yeah, my my issues with this is that uh, I don't think you paid much attention to your forms because if if you look at this, the the the, the leg is really looking bent in a weird way, at least for me, at least in my eyes, right? At least that's what I noticed. And then it's like the proportion wise, I know this leg can't be that far away from the front leg, 
but then your front leg looks like rotated in this direction somehow. And then your spear is definitely hitting through the guy's body. It's piercing because I don't think this character is that flat. I think it's really thick. To me, this reminds me of Juggernaut from uh, X-Men, but I'm not saying it's a Juggernaut design. I'm just saying it, it, to me, it feels really thick and chunky like Juggernaut, right? So I definitely had to make this form drawing to make it more understandable, like, uh, you know, like objects cannot be, how do you call a cult? Now, objects cannot be ghosting through each other. Like, mm. uh, forms cannot be Objects ghosting are through one another, appear. right? Yeah. Is, is that the right word, right? Uh, clipping? Yeah, clipping, yeah, yeah, definitely that one. I'm still trying so, to get over it being thick. So, for example, if you, if you at least look at this hand, right? This hand is, like, flat, so which means it's definitely clipping through the thigh or its buttocks, if you ask me. So... That's why I had to make everything rotated. Uh, yeah, that's what I had to do. And if we come down here, I made a little overpaint. Uh, excuse me, my Photoshop. Okay, down here. So this is your version, and this is what I painted over. So if you look at the uh, character, I just simply adjusted the hand. He's a uh, right hand with a spear. Like that. And I fixed the leg faces where it's looking at. Uh, damn it. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, just just, focus on the character for a second. I'll, I'll go around to things. And do you see that uh, chest emblem thing that's moving to the middle part? Yeah, this like now it makes everything look very real, right? I didn't change proportions. I didn't change the design, right? I, I just simply change the form, right? Make it exist over there. And also, uh, since I was looking at all my reference images, like all this close walls and all this rocks, I wanted to apply it around these char this character so it can look like it's actually going through a tunnel, like going through a, ro uh, a road, I would say, underwater road in a trench, rather than just like a really large space. And this creates like a, a well, what do you call it? A reading direction, I would say. Now uh, everything is coming yeah. from this perspective, right? Which means these guys are coming right at you, right? So I also added more of his brethren in the water. And I definitely try to add that volumetric fog thing that's going on with all the water beams coming in. So I hope this adds more drama. And yeah, this is... This is what I would add if it was me. So yeah, my, my advice would be definitely pay attention to your forms. I think you can render at least good at this level. You can I, I can see that you definitely use sharp edges to separate elements. That's really important. Thank you. Um, and you also understand about glowing things and some materials like iron and even like crocodile leather thing going on here. It's great. I like it. But yeah, pay attention to your forms from now on, okay? So if you pay attention, then it'll be okay. And once you master your forms, you can definitely spend more time going back to further your materials or your understanding of light and environments. That's that's all I have to say. So uh, do you have anything to add, Colton? Uh, yeah, actually, a, a little bit. I can switch to my screen really quick. Uh... Mm. Uh, I would I would definitely say what Burin says. I would double down on that fact. I have I've been on a job for the last five months, and it's that all we're doing is this is this character armor, and it's so incredibly important to make sure your perspective and your forms are working and connecting together. That things are things are not impossible shapes. Because it just makes it a nightmare for the 3D modelers to try and build it. Like, you know, like how does this head here connect to 
these shoulders? You know, is it going under? Is it intersecting with it? You know, you're like like Buren said. You know, you need to have your your center line. You move things based on that. You have, you know, your your forms need to read. And then like this goes up. So like this guy is kind of like a cylinder, yet the shape transitions into like this like how does that happen you know what is the what is the mesh what, what if you built this in like real life what would this transition be right like because right now it's 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 really unclear and i'm kind of you know going through this and just thinking like well how are these forms reading how are they connecting so especially with like even your little bits like all these all these um, spikes are, are kind of pointing different directions. That's something that's that's like really, you know, figure out your perspective on these, you know. Make sure that it's traveling down there. Like, you know, you want, like, is this going all the way around? Your ellipses aren't, aren't curving around, right? So just make sure that, like, your forms, like, if you look really closely, you'll notice that just a lot of this stuff is... Even the little tiny bits are, are, are out of perspective. So just be careful. It's it's really important. That's gonna be something they're they're looking for when they when they wanna hire or when you're gonna be working on on projects and stuff. You know, like even just your spear your spe yeah, your uh, spear needs to be, you know, cylinder. How are these shapes coming out? How is this wrapping around? All that kind of stuff. So just really want to emphasize that because it's so important to your to your job. Uh, someone's got to build this. Uh, my in one of my first jobs, I really struggled with this because I just didn't have the <clears throat> ability yet to have this oh, awareness of forms coming together. <clears throat> So, and I struggled on it, <clears throat> and it made it more difficult for the client I was working with because someone had to actually go in and fix my work, like, and that lost them money on me. And luckily, they, they kept me long enough for me to, to get better and start being able to produce the right stuff. But, <clears throat> you know, maybe, <clears throat> maybe you won't get so lucky. So, uh, yeah, I mean... Overall, the design is interesting. It's cool. Like, yeah. <clears throat> I like the idea. <clears throat> I like the uh, asymmetrical aspect of the face. It's kind of like uh, yeah. psychotic, right? Yeah. Like, uh, like a creepy... Oh, he's like unhinged is the word, right? The English word, was it unhinged? I'm not sure exactly. A creepiness? Like a yeah. derp... Not really derpiness, yeah. but... Yeah. Anyways, um, describe your forms really well with your like, like what is this reflecting right here? You know, like make sure that your your other speculars are working and all that kind of stuff. So I, your rendering's not too bad, but you can't render like if you make a line work, for example, and you're, you know, you're gonna be rendering these forms that are not working in perspective. You're gonna have a bunch of impossible geometry. You know, like this kind of this kind of geometry that you can't render it you're going to have to go in and fix it after the fact you know so um just be just be real be real careful with that and that's that's about it yeah but i mean nice work you're it's a good it's a great idea and you got some some really interesting interesting stuff so that's about that's about it that's about all i have to say about it um yeah i liked your i liked your paint over burn putting more characters in the background so it feels a lot more it just did so much for the image dun 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 oh dun, yeah dun, 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 dun. right yep so it really gives off that vibe yeah so anyways, I will go on to my next one, which is this mm -hmm. one. I'm just going to say a couple of quick things about this. Uh, these are really accurate, which almost makes me think that maybe they were traced to a certain extent. 
Um, but I'm going to assume that they weren't and focus on other stuff because if they were, I'm not going to obviously like shame the person for tracing or whatever because you know it's it's them who's who's um who's doing the studying and learning so i'm gonna talk about the stuff so i would say um the, like the colors are literally like exactly on like there's you know no none of that stuff so which almost makes me think that maybe it was color picked or whatever you know everything's like exactly exact but um as far as painting goes i would say make sure your focal points reading and i put a little red dot um make sure your focal points are tighter than the rest because <clears throat> that's where the person's gonna look if you're if you're treating this like a painting you want the the focal point to be the tightest area and then everything else kind of fades off in detail um like for here for example like this is kind of the focal point and you want this guy's face to read and the these forms that this light i don't know what movie this is from uh, that this light is creating you want this to to read really well and on yours this is almost just as detailed as this and i would say spend maybe an extra half an hour on this like you know, take a half an hour away from rendering all this and instead add it right on, right on this area. And it will help your image so much. A half an hour spent here will do more to your image than a half an hour spent all around here, usually. Um, same with like the guy, make sure that your, your edges are, are, you know, nice and tight and clean because this is what you're looking at, like as a viewer. So just make sure that the tightest part of your image, with the with that your edges, like edge control is so important on these and on painting and everything. Why is this doing that? So you know, just make sure that that all this stuff is is really is really tight you know just go over it with like your lasso tool and everything and really just tighten the last bit of it up that extra little percentage you know and then some maybe some areas like this i would probably just clean up really quick like some big some high areas of contrast like that's the important thing you know your highest areas of contrast and right where your focal point is is what you want to focus on cleaning up the most, you know? So just really, and for some reason I'm doing this with my mouse right now, but I would say, you know, just, just make sure that when you're, when you're doing, um, when, and uh, when you're focusing on your edges, make sure that you're really focusing on high areas of contrast like some of these areas. So nice work with that. Uh, like this guy too. This guy's obviously the focal point. So spend the most time on him. Um, spend the most time on these guys, which I think in this one you actually did for the most, like quite a bit. Um, but I would say even their faces, just put that extra little, little just oomph into it and do that. Same with uh, just, yeah, basically all of them. Um, but they're, they're nice. I mean, I would say if you're not color picking and you're not tracing at all, they're incredibly accurate. Like, incredibly accurate. So, nice work. And now I will, I'll just really quickly go over this one. Um, it's Christina's. Um, you actually uploaded a pretty low resolution version of this. It's really blurry. But... Um, I, I already I already critiqued her on this myself, so I'll, I'll just go over this really quick. But uh, I, I, you're, uh, make sure you're using your your value range. I noticed that some of your darks aren't getting as dark as as the study. So like like the shirt right here is darker than what you did. Uh, this suit is a little bit less saturated than the one over here. You know, like this dark this black right or this dark right here. Yours is seems like it's a bit. A bit lighter than that not too much just a little bit but I, I've seen this overall like over and over so just make sure that your darks are getting dark enough 
because it will kind of flatten your image or make it feel a little bit faded. And then I think your alien studies are actually working a lot better than the uh, Space Odyssey ones. Um, I think the space. I think a lot of people had trouble on these these Space Odyssey images. They were really hard. I know I had trouble on them, especially, you know, especially this one, and this one. I didn't get them all done, which is kind of funny because I assigned them, but you know, like what you did right here with this light, you did really well. That works. That works good. It looks good overall, like, you know, but you're like your darks again in this area, not dark enough. So uh, maybe a little bit on your your edge control too. So anyways, I just want to do these in rapid succession. Uh, this is, uh, I forget who did these. I didn't write down the name for some reason. I'll look really quick. Us weekly assignments, discuss. I think this was. Um, I'm not sure. A hero. So obviously, you enjoyed doing studies of Ghibli a lot more than 2001 Space Odyssey. By the contrast, and how rough these ones are compared to these ones, especially this one. So, which is fine. I would say if you're going to put um, hardly any time into these, again, focal point. You can leave a lot of this stuff out there really loose and then focus. And, and you kind of did that to an extent. But I would say even if you want to go further, you know, there, there could be like just a couple little um, parts in here that you can make just a little bit tighter than the rest. And it, it will start to read a bit better. I, I want a, a good book is is I think it's called Graphic LA. It's a uh, it's a book that has some really graphically graphical loose stuff. Um, I love that. I love that book. So, you know, just these like really quick like things can just can just bring up the uh, like the especially with edge control and all that. So. You know, but nice work. Um, these these last couple are looking really good. Uh, the perspective's a little bit off on this one. Like, uh, make sure that you're checking your oops, your angles, like this and this, versus like this. So I like to check this angle right here with your perspective. Like if you're if you're doing a study from a photo, you know you got to use every tool in your arsenal. Obviously, you want to find the vanishing point of it. But at the same time, you can also check by checking an angle like this and be like, okay, like what's that angle, you know, versus like almost like a 45 degree, maybe what's, what would a 45 degree be? Maybe like, like that. So a little bit less, maybe 40, 35 to 40 degree versus this one, which is almost like a 45 degree. So, you know, you can check and compare those angles in yours versus theirs um and then with this last one really good job i don't really have any comments on this one it's 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 pretty well done you know and i obviously you probably like that one the best too so <clears throat> um and then one last one really quick ming ho um i'm not really going to comment on these they weren't really the studies that we assigned i think they, they just posted them because they felt like it but uh this is a really good way i, I like what you did you broke it down graphically and you probably started with this and then moved towards the top, which is the actual frame, by the way. So there, theirs is this detailed. But it's a really good way to break down um, graphically what, what you're seeing. It, it, I think uh, Framed Ink, that book that we have mentioned a number of times, talked about that. Um, so, yeah, nice breaking it down graphically. I definitely think that any of you watching can take a – can take a uh, look at this and like framed ink for example and graphic la also does this uh really well so maybe check out that book it's awesome and then that's it for all my for everything i've i had to talk about today Board. i have one more all right okay uh 
this is one movie study from a username called the designer i have a bold couple of username. issues hello excuse me what i said that's a bold username to have yeah it is uh okay what well, anyways I, I didn't give it so um yeah like if you ask me what is wrong here i would okay what's working right at least you're uh if you're not using color picker, your your colors are quite close, I would say, and your general placement of elements are pretty on point. But uh, we've been talking about it for at least three episodes now. Edges, right? Edges. If your edges are blurry, it will always be hard to see what it is. And I understand you you, you were making some studies. But even when you do your studies, it's not just something you just smudge it around and throw it away. You basically waste your time. Uh, you have to pay attention. You need to read what you're looking at. You need to understand where are the shapes, what are the shapes. Um, and then you can go with bounce lights, hues, values. You know, it's, it's not just something you blindly copy and kind of, well, it, yeah, it looks the same from – like – Look, man, you, you like if you worked like this from far away, you know, like maybe, right? But the picture provided was this big, right? So I would highly recommend you do edge controls. And I tried to paint over your stuff here. See? Like it's only on the half of it, but look at look at what's going on. At least yes, I used soft brush. Yes, I did. But at least I used some lasso tools on some elements, and I also pushed the edges on certain elements. Now it's easily more distinguishable, right? I know. You might say, well, I'm not showing it to anybody. Who cares? No, it's not about showing it to someone else. It's actually you learning things yourself, okay? So look at that. Look, like, look at all the white uh, light areas. When, when you smudge it like this, we don't know what it is, right? But even you don't know what it is, right? If you, if you don't know the top image, okay? Let me, let me just cover it for you. If you, if you don't, let's say if you... T tell me what did you learn from this? I, I can't tell. I'm sorry, you know? And then, yeah, edges. Now, uh, yeah. And last thing I want to mention is... Uh, it's not just for you. It's for it's for everyone else as well. Uh, um, okay, let's say if I, if I do a color picker, right? This is this is here very saturated, but this is like blue. But this is like pink, and this is blue, pink blue. It's not wrong, because when you look at this painting, because this picture has so many blue hotspots around here, everything else will seem warmer. And that is not wrong because your brain observe it like that. But if you really put it side by side, you can see that this is way more saturated than the top one. Here's why. There is a thing called simultaneous effect. And that definitely has to do with color wheel. Now, um, let me pick a red pen real quick, my magical red pen. So. If you, if you look at this gray, this gray is exactly the same gray. See, I'm using color picker. Nothing's changing, right? White, black, gray, 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 black, white. See? But in a, in a more brighter area, this gray looks more darker. But in a darker area, this gray looks more lighter, right? Okay, fine. That was more extreme. But what about here? Right? These are very close gray, but look, bam, bam, same, bam, 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 it's in the middle, see? Now, let's check it, how it works on the color wheel, okay? Now, if I zoom, if I look at this, the middle gray is the same, but it's been boxed by blue and orange, okay? Let me tell you how this works. So, let's just zoom in over here. Right, no more blue. Now, focus on the gray. Does it look more colder? Does it look like 
It's almost like bluish gray. No, it's not. There is there. There's like. It's yeah. it's almost here. See, because I expanded it, there's like a sudden pixel yeah. shift. Uh, to, to, don't worry about that. But but this is this is the idea. See, this is the gray. But this is this. But if I go here. Does this gray box look more warmer? Does it feel warmer to you, right? To me, it does. See? Same gray, but blue, right? That's why, if we go back up one more time, I only talk maybe 10 minutes more. Uh, if, you, if you look at all these blues, because if there's so many blues, the grays will feel warm to you. That's where you, that's when you guess your colors wrong, right? wrong in a machine level but it's correct in your head but you know you need to you need to notice maybe i'm looking at this gray war warmer because there is a lot more blue around it or maybe i'm looking at this gray more colder because it's set in a warmer environment right so if you look at the color wheel if i zoom in Next to these uh, colors, this gray would look like its opposite color. Uh, it, it's, it's actually a quite big topic. You can definitely find tons of lectures and videos on YouTube and Google alike. But any color you put next to the gray, the gray color will look like its opposite hue. So that's what you need to notice when you're making movie studies or painting studies, even uh, planar drawings, right? now. You might ask, well, Buren, what's the point of making movie studies if we're just going to blindly copy or that's what I do or anything? No, you pick up stuff. You pick up little things from each one, right? You could, it, well, it depends on how your mind is oriented. If you're design oriented, then you, while you're doing this, you will think, oh, look here, even though this is exactly symmetrical and this elements are symmetrical, but what happened? There is one exception. Oh, he put one bed over here. Oh, wait, he put two over here, right? Even though they're exactly the same thing, but this is how you break symmetry, or this is how you make uh, interesting points, right? You have this one board over here, but you have a big box over here, right? Even though it's exactly a symmetrical room. Did you pick that up? You will if you make this uh, movie studies. What's next? Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe you will notice if you pay attention, you might say, well... Uh, I would say 20% of this picture is just blue lights and 80% of it is just gray or the other hues, right? Maybe you notice that. Mm -hmm. Okay, he, he does that for uh, design. What's next? Okay, these blue lights are not like strong, right? It's very like uh, soft light, right? So what happens? It goes in every direction, but in a very soft manner. So it goes here, it goes here. And this light is bouncing off here because the surface is really hard and smooth. And then this light is being picked up here. This light is also picked up here. Okay, fine. This is way far away to notice. But what about here? This white light is being projected here, right? And if you re look really hard, this white light is creating this, this little rim light over here, right? As you do this, this blue light is being picked up on this edge. This blue light is being projected on the floor. Why is this area dark? Because this bed is blocking it, right? Etc. You, you, and then this light, yeah, there's a light there. This face is looking towards us, then this light was definitely hit this. And, and this, this, this light is being picked up on the surface of this bed because this bed is like this, but this surface is like that. So, you know, you can just look at this and go, okay, what about the design? Cool. Okay, what about the hue color choice? This. Okay, what about lights? This. See, you, you can you can learn so much, pick up so much from this. That's why the more you do, the, the more you will get better at it. So uh, that's all I would say about uh, this piece and uh, a couple of things I need to mention about simultaneous effect and the color wheel. And this is something you must learn while you're doing studies because... It will help you understand why you're picking, uh, I mean, recognizing certain color in a certain way, rather than if you're not color picking. But we will definitely uh, recommend not to color pick at all. So that, that's all I have to say for uh, 
Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Great. Thank you for that critique. Um. Yeah, I guess if that's everything you had for today. Mm. Great. There is your face again. Look at you. Um. All right. That's that's actually everything we we had for today. Um. We've been. We've been going for like you know two hours or something, almost two hours. So thanks everybody for coming. Uh, really nice work. And Buren, do you, do you really have anything else to say? Uh, no. Uh, thank you for uh, doing all these assignments. Uh, we really appreciate the uh, spirit. Keep yeah. going. Uh, keep doing it. You'll definitely get better. And if you guys do more stuff, we will definitely try to cover them all. Yeah. So the more you put out there, the more we will put out to you as well. So uh, it's, a, it's a two-way street. So thanks for everyone who uh, submits work. It, it really helps us to... Uh, it, we also get inspired by your work as well because we see things, oh, this thing's working. Maybe I could definitely make something like this in my next drawing or, you know, it's, you know, it, it's weird to explain, but we, but we see things that we could definitely, uh, learn from. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, we're also learning with you as well on how to make instructions and all that. So, yeah. So thanks for everyone. Yeah, um, I guess that's pretty much it. Right? Switch camera, Colton. Let me s right. let us see your mug one more time. Hey, there you are. So, yep. uh, so uh, we'll see everyone next week, and uh, we'll try to have guests. But uh, this is something we have not. Uh, made sure yet because uh, some of our guests need to plan their time as well so mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah uh, um, thanks for being patient with us yeah we thought about <clears throat> well this is the thing neither neither Buren nor I really like or want to talk about ourselves but a, a person or two has mentioned that we haven't gone over our artwork or history or old work or story at all like we've had guests on and stuff who talk about themselves but uh, our guests or our, our viewers are saying who is Burin you know who is who is Colton like th they'll say this they'll say that like oh I didn't know Burin went to FZD like he never told us that in episode one or Colton never said he did this or what is this what is that so we're deciding whether we actually want to have an episode where we talk about ourselves and show our old work. Maybe I can interview you, Burin, and you can interview me. Who knows? But um, so that's that's in the process of, of being considered, too. Uh, like I said, we don't like to talk about ourselves. We'd rather interview other people. So mm, um, definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's not like we have anything to hide. It's just our quest is about other people than us. So. Yeah. Definitely. It's about, you know, the guests and it's about the, the people in like the, the discord and on the Facebook who are, who are wanting to improve and grow and get work and stuff. So yeah. But uh, if we'll, you have uh, personal questions regarding our history, you could definitely ask us on discord. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there's nothing to hide. So don't worry. We were not any criminals or uh, fugitives running from the law or, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Um, all right. I guess that's it. Thank that's you for everybody today. for thank coming. You. We are, thank you, uh, Wither Skeletor. He followed us a couple minutes ago. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Thank you for following us. Slayer Agium. I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. He followed us about an hour ago. And then Max Mushroom 64 followed us uh, an hour, about an hour ago. So thank you, everybody, for the follows. And thanks for showing up. And we will see you next weekend. And we will are have, out. Yeah, we're out. We'll have a couple of guests lined up, hopefully. I'd love to get one on next weekend. And 
maybe maybe someone with a bigger with a bigger name, maybe a bit more popular. I don't know. I'll have to I'll have to ask him and see. So, mm. all right. Okay. Have a good weekend. I mean, have a good week ahead. So, all right. Uh, thank Bye. you for coming. All right. See ya.